As much emphasis as we place on the Gospels for knowing Jesus Christ, it is Paul who gives, the, gives us the theological handles to understand him. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, July 28th, 2020. For the most part, the Gospels tell us what Jesus said, did, and endured. There is, of course, theological interpretation going on within them, but they take the form of narrative accounts rather than explicitly theological reflection. The church has relied at least as heavily, if not more so, on Paul than on the Gospels to understand who Jesus is and what he does. Today's passage comes from one of Paul's shortest letters, the letter to the Colossians. In this letter, Paul tries to explain why some of the various beliefs and practices that had seeped into the church from different sources lead to a false gospel. Paul insists that Jesus is the one authority to which the church owes its allegiance. Listen to what Paul says early in this letter, and then let's unpack it. Jesus is the, first, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. In this one short passage, we learn a lot about Jesus. First, we learn that Jesus is the very image of God. In and of itself, this doesn't sound all that earth-shaking. After all, God created humankind in God's own image and likeness. So what we learn about Jesus is that he is, in fact, like us. He is human. There were those in the early church, and for several hundred years, who argued that Jesus couldn't possibly be human. If he was God in any meaningful way, this would absolutely preclude his being a human being. Paul boldly claims otherwise, and this is decisive in our understanding of Jesus. Second, we learn that Jesus is present at creation, and in fact, in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. There was that strong element in the early church that believed that the material world was only evil and corrupt, and that whatever God created the world must be an evil and capricious God. These people believed that Jesus saves us from the evil material world in which we live. Paul insists that not only is Jesus human, flesh and blood like us, but that as Savior, he is also creator. We're not saved from an evil material world. Rather, this material wor world is the good creation of a good and loving God. Third, we learn that Jesus is not only a human being, he is also God. While Paul doesn't exactly spell this out here, it is clear from the fact that Jesus is the one through whom all things were created, that he is in some mysterious way both human and divine. For as Paul says, in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Fourth, we learn that Jesus is what Paul calls the firstborn of the dead, that is, Jesus dies like the rest of us, but in his resurrection, he opens the way to life eternal for us. 
Finally, we learn that what this is all about, that it is through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his, his, his cross. In other words, it is in and through Jesus Christ that we become reconciled to God. If estrangement from God was our natural condition, now in Christ we have indeed been reconciled to God. As you can see, there is a lot packed into these six short verses. There are other details we might want to know about Jesus, but to know that he's both human and divine, that creation takes place through him, and that in him we are reconciled to God is very nearly the whole ball of wax, which is why I include it in my canon of scripture passages that help us interpret the rest of the Bible. Now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.